Royal Oak, beloved worshiping and praying community, how do you think of Jesus? Do you think of Jesus as the high priest? Do you think of Jesus as the healer, the person who touched lepers, the person who ate with tax collectors, the person who threw out the money changers? Jesus thought about himself. He thought about himself when he made seven of what they call the I am statements in the Gospel of John. These are the words of Jesus. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. So that's how Jesus thought about himself. But something happened to me this week that made me change the name of my sermon. My sermon in your bulletin says, the Lord is my refuge. Jesus is our high priest. I was going to preach on that. But something happened this week and I changed the name of my sermon to The Lord is My Imagination. But what we don't see in the gospel is Jesus making the statement, I am the imagination of the word of God. We don't hear that. But last, this past week, I attended a seminar on preaching, and it was taught by Reverend Dr. Tom Long. Tom Long's wife, Kim, preached in this pulpit when I was in Mexico in 2020. And, and here's what Tom said. He said, parables of Jesus are access points to Jesus' imagination. I never understood or realized that Jesus actually had imagination. You know, I mean, he's God. It's like if you grew up thinking about your parents and you can't ever imagine your parents ever being young. They were young? Can't believe it. Jesus had imagination? What? Can't believe that either. But, but Reverend Tom's words about Jesus imagining got me to imagine. And so, dear God, Please come into my mind and heart this morning. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations, the imagination of my heart, touch this, your beloved community here in our sanctuary and online, that they may be lifted up and blessed by your word and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Because if you stop and think about this, and maybe we don't want to stop and think about this, God's imagination is fearsome. It was the imagination of God that said, well, I'm just going to wipe out the world with a giant flood. But it's also the imagination of God that is fearless. It was Jesus and God's imagination that he suffered and died a death on the cross and that would redeem the world. When we are baptized, we are told we are baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Absolutely. But I'd like you to consider we are also baptized into the imagination of Jesus. Jesus' divine imagination or the divine imagination enabled by Father, Redeemer, Sustainer, conceived of separating dark from light. Most of us can't conceive of why we need to separate darks from lights when we do the laundry. And yet, God conceived of separating dark from light. He conceived of separating land from sea. Much to the chagrin of amateur boaters everywhere who spend a lot of money on their boats. And he separated earth from sky 
But most importantly, God's imagination enabled him to do this. And this is in the words of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. God's imagination. The Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. How did that happen? How did it happen that God could imagine that he could take dirt, breathe into it, and create a living soul? That's the power of God's imagination and the awe of God's imagination. And, and the beautiful thing is we all have in us the DNA of God's imagination. It's in us. We may not believe it. We may not realize it. We may not use it. But God's imagination is in us. Do you believe that? I mean, the pastor said it. It must be true. I believe it. And how do you use your imagination? Do you ever use your imagination? And, and if you do, or if you don't, can you use your imagination more? So why would Jesus' imagination be something that I am preaching on today? And why did Jesus use his imagination to spread the word of his father? Well, Cheryl Forbes wrote a book. It's called Imagination, Embracing a Theology of Wonder. And here's what Cheryl says. For Jesus, people had lasting imaginative needs that he wanted to feed. People were either good seed or bad, either fruitful fig trees or barren, either wise or foolish virgins. And Jesus did this to help people understand themselves through the use of images and metaphors. He constantly asked people, which image are you? Are you the persistent widow? Are you the good Samaritan? Are you the mustard seed? Are you the wicked tenants? Are you the prodigal son? Jesus had this genius to preach in parables, not so he could tell us what to do, but so he could spark our imaginations in us, reminding us that we are created with that same imaginative DNA in the Imago Dei, and we can discover for ourselves what to do. Professor Douglas Estes has this beautiful use of using imagination in our lives. His words, imagination sits between our senses and our experiences, between our memory and our heart, between our intellect and our will. And in order for us to know God well, we must engage our imaginations to inform our thinking and actions. That's astonishing. God wants us to imagine. We know we are called to love and serve. I want to tell you this morning and consider this, that we are also called to imagine. Because if we cannot imagine, how can we fully love and serve God and God's people? Now, going back to Reverend Tom Long in the seminar, he said, parables are GPS devices that take us to the place where God breaks in. God breaks in. So what does GPS mean? What do those letters mean? Global positioning system. Yeah, that's okay for out there. In the secular world, consider that maybe GPS means God positioning system. And the God positioning system, the parables of Jesus, the imagination of Jesus, are taking us to places where God, 
God is breaking in to our thoughts and our lives. The weak word parable comes from two words, para and bole, and that means uh, laid down alongside. So these are GPS, God positioning devices, that are laid down alongside us so God can show us the way where he wants us to go. And Jesus is our high priest, preached about that last week. And Jesus has loved, last week I also preached, that is active and piercing and restoring. And so the love that Jesus has for us as our high priest pierces us actively and restores us and sees in that divine mind the imago dei in us. Jesus sees us not as we are, but Jesus sees us as we can be. Using our imagination, we get to understand that we can maybe see ourselves as God sees us, as God wants us to be, as we can be. Jesus used imaginative language so we could see ourselves better. And once we see ourselves better, we have more and more opportunities to be in better connection with our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. I just want to finish this with these words. And yes, this is short for me. Frederick Beckner, who was a theologian earlier last century, he was talking about the divine power of imagination. And he says this, if we are to love our neighbors before doing anything else, we must see our neighbors with our imagination as well as with our eyes. We must see our neighbors with our imagination, not just their faces, but the life behind and the life within their faces. With our imagination, love becomes the frame in which we see them. The imagination of God and Jesus has framed each of us in such a wonderful and beautiful way with unique gifts and graces that we have. And the imagination of Jesus and God comes into us every day to nurture those gifts and graces and lift them up. We are about to celebrate communion. It's the first and third Sunday. It's the third Sunday. Imagine the meal that we are about to celebrate and how the gift and love of God sees us not as we are, but as who we can be. And so, we pray always to be more like Jesus. But as we pray to be more like Jesus, just remember that Jesus was the imagination for the word in this world. And let us pray to be that imagination also. And we ask this and give thanks for this in Jesus' name. Amen.